So with regard to dominoes to start with, obviously we identified this as a negative surprise risk, but we were surprised uh, much more than we expected to be. Um, so what was going on? I mean, I think we anticipated that Domino's would walk away from its uh, network expansion target for the year. It had previously said 8 to 10% expansion. Uh, we thought that was going to be a stretch, and indeed they did walk away from that yesterday. But that was really um, a bit of a rounding error in the, in the litany of bad news. Um, the earnings fell 5% short of our expectations. They were down 21% year on year. Now, as you can see, we were expecting a significant drop off, and 5% miss isn't huge. Um, but what was really surprising was the um, the failure for the business to make any progress in the second half so far. So in the first seven weeks of um, the second half, like for like sales fell by 2.2%. Now, bear in mind that like for likes were neutral in the first half, which is what we expected, which is what the company had an anticipated would happen. However, in the second half, the company was guiding to around about 6% minimum like for like sales to get them to 3% to 6% for the year. Now, starting that with negative 2.2 is not a good look. Um, and it's not going to change anytime soon because what's really happened here is that sales started to soften in December. They were still positive, but they softened and then moved negative in, in January. And this is really a reaction from customers to higher prices and higher surcharges like, like delivery fees. Now, these are the same higher prices and surcharges which have been accepted by the Australian consumer and the Australian consumer continues to accept them. But in Europe and Asia, there was a significant pushback against them. That necessitates a rethink on Domino's part. Um, they need to go down a value path. Uh, the concerns around cost of living is not going to, uh, they're not going to go away in Europe, uh, places like Germany and France, in a hurry. They will get better as inflation comes off. But in the short term, they can't afford to lose sales and lose customers because they're out of the, out of the money in terms of um, uh, pricing of, of pizza. Um, so we think that's going to weigh on sales and earnings this year. Um, and we've taken the conservative view that it's not going to get an awful lot better next year. Um, so we've taken our EBIT down by 12% this year, which is obviously a significant move. Um, now, the shares were down 24% yesterday, I think. Now, that feels like an overreaction. It is, a, it is an overreaction, to be fair. And there was a bit of emotion going around, I think largely because the company had raised $165 million in December when they should have um, known that these dynamics were in train. Um, so the fact that they did that and didn't uh, indicate that the uh, business was softening um, is on them. And that's a real issue for people. And that's one of the reasons that a lot of emotion flying around and the share price reacted the way it did. So cool heads would suggest that there is a, um, an opportunity here, a mispricing opportunity. I think it will take a while for this company to come out of the sin bin. Um, they have um, disappointed people a few times now. Um, and while we started to see some indications that things were getting better in the early part of the first half, the fact that it's fallen away um, and a rethink is required for the second half means that our views are, um, are changing. Um, that said, given the extent of the share price fall, we still think there's upside, but you need to be patient. This is not going to snap back super quick, um, but it is trading below where it should do. Um, when you look at the long-term potential, which is unchanged, this company will continue to take share. It will continue to roll out stores. It will continue to track up towards its longer-term targets, which were reiterated yesterday. It will do M&A, which takes further market share. Um, so the company, and, and of course, the margins will come back in due course. Um, the company is going to recover, but it will take a bit of time. Um, I'll be quicker on Levisa. Um, earnings were in line with forecast, um, but how they got there was, was a little bit different. So MPAT was 1% above, but that doesn't tell the whole story. Mm -hmm. um, sales were a little bit above expectations, but gross profits were really good because they pushed up prices um, by about uh, 10%. Um, and that was accepted by, by the customers. Um, so gross profit was 4% um, higher than expectations, but the LTI provision, so you remember that Victor Herrero, the CEO, has a significant um, LTI package. Um, the company needs to provide for future payments, and they increase that. So there's $15 million provision. We're expecting $9 million. Uh, why has the company done that? It's because they think they're going to earn more money in the future. Um, so that's a pretty positive signal. Um, now, why are they going to earn more money? Well, they're rolling out a lot more stores. Um, so they opened 86 stores on a net basis in the first half. That was more than they did in the whole of last year, um, an extraordinary number. We expected 60. 84 was what they did. And they're saying that the rollout momentum is increasing. And they've also increased their um, mm -hmm. debt facility. They've doubled it from 50 million to 100 million to give them the capacity to do that. They entered seven new markets in the half. 
and they pushed into Latin America, Colombia, uh, Peru, they're in Hong Kong, Romania, Italy, um, Poland, uh, even Namibia. And with all of these places, they've got a handful of stores, one or two stores. Um, that gives them a land and expand strategy, which is going to see this company grow significantly over the next few years. Um, so we've increased our EBIT by 2% this year, 4% next year. Doesn't sound like that much. But if you look through the model, you see we've significantly increased the number of stores, which pushes up the sales. But of course, Victor Herrero is going to earn even more money. Uh, and so we've got him topping out at the, the maximum LTI, which is $28 million a year um, for the next couple of years. And um, that's provided in our numbers, and that takes uh, a bit of the top um, off, our, off our forecast. But um, clearly, this company has got a lot of momentum. Thank you.